Hey everybody, welcome to uh, today's vlog. Uh, today we're gonna be heading to Gilliard Lake in Francis Marion National Forest. It's a little scouting mission because uh, I think it might be a potential camping spot for the future. Uh, we were actually thinking about camping today, but looking at the weather, it's supposed to start raining at 12 a.m. and really be raining in the morning. So we decided to just turn it into a scouting trip but we're looking forward to having a good time. Um, some of the reviews for the area kind of said that the road getting there was rough. And uh, I did some tweaking to my flat out suspension coilovers. I'm hoping that it kind of solves the little bit of clunking that we've been experiencing. I'm gonna do a full review on that coming up soon. I've been doing my best to work out work with flat out and they've done some stuff to try to help us, but we're still experiencing a clunk. All right, boys, are you ready for adventure? Yay! I'm ready to make a snakeshot. Oh, okay. We already have a snakeshot, Eli! A custom one. All right, we've touched base on dirt. Always the right way to start an adventure. Oh, boy, honey. Uh-uh. Oh, boy. I keep seeing all these ridiculous dirt mud bogging holes that all the good old boys are going through and the yee boys yeah and uh i can't help but remember that we haven't really tested our winch out too well so uh -huh. we'll see what we can find that looked like looked like we'd have to winch for sure the only thing about roads like this that i hate so much is seeing all the litter yeah. don't be a litter bug don't be lame that's stupid this guy's doing some cleanup <laughs> yes this guy Good job, man. We appreciate you cleaning up all this trash. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. God we, bless you. Yes. We were just talking about God bringing bless the trailer you. next time. Thank yeah, you. we were talking about the same thing. It's so gross. Why do people do that? Lady told me she went to New Zealand and saw two can on the ground in two weeks. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, God bless you. Thank you for Thank cleaning you, up the world. Have a blessed day. You too. So a lot of people that see our car kind of, I don't know, slipping and stalling out, they're like, your torque converter's bad, et cetera, et cetera. But in normal driving, you know, we don't feel any issues with that. So I think that uh, we just have so much traction that it's causing that issue. Anyways, people have asked for a zero to 60 and this looks like a decent straightaway for it. So Lenny's gonna um, All right. film the speedometer here. Ready, and I've got traction control off. I think that helps, but we'll see. giant giant for a pilot 32 inch mud terrain tires they weigh i think they might weigh 20 pounds extra each and all of that affects your you know acceleration so um the pilot's not a speed demon by any stretch but in normal driving conditions and stuff it gets up to speed just fine and out of our civic and our crv and our pilot it's definitely the quickest of our vehicles sadly but it is what it is these are the exact roads you really should air down on, but we just didn't take the time to do it. It would be a lot more smooth. on a road 
road called Gilliard Lake, Lake Road. So that yeah. seems like a much good, better clue spot, that we're yeah. Yeah, on the right track. Alright, so we go straight or two we roads can turn, diverged. It's got us turning. Aha. Uh -huh. turn. Two roads diverged in a wood. And be one traveler long I stood. Robert Frost. too much? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Squishy, squishy. It's also kind of good that it's hard squishy, bottom. Squishy. Ugh. We definitely need to find some more mud soon. the winch out properly. Right. See if we can pull off the front bumper. Yeah, no. We're not pulling a bend from HRG on this one. Oh, no. I'm not talking about <laughs> just the bumper cover. I'm talking about the the front hitch receiver I built, too. Oh. And maybe even more than that, if it all gives. Oh, my goodness. Might be the whole front end. Lights and all. Yeah, that's not a good idea. camp. So that's cool. So there's another campground in France Community National Forest called Halfway Creek and we've camped there before. It's a lot more accessible to, than this and last time we were there there seemed to be if you know what I mean a lot of long-term campers. Um, there were also some kind of stray unattended dogs that were sort of threatening. It was just a lot of people and no offense to the people some of them were a little bit kind of unsightly if you will. Yep, so this yeah. is the lake. There's Gulliver Lake. I kind of like this area of camp. Yeah, no, I think this is a good find. I think so far our scouting trip is showing that this but has I see a, over a better chance of having um, Yeah, I think some this is our spot where we can have a little fire. Yep. It's kind of surrounded, um, it's like a little peninsula. Yep, so straight that way is where the uh, Santee River would be. So I don't think we're gonna be able to get to it very easily. We got a little bit of mud on the old beast. Okay, Eli, you know what the first order of business is? Firewood. Eli, I thought you were gonna use the, the sparker to do it. But I don't really care. You can light it however you want. So when you have a vehicle with a roof rack on it, right? All you have to find is one tree and you've got a hammock mount. Are you getting it? Pull. Pull. Help him, Isaac. Pull. Here, I'll use my axe. I'll, I'll free it up.
Oh, we got it. We got it. You fell on the floor. Well, I'd say we successfully got the fire going. What do you think, Isaac? And I successfully learned how to shoot a screenshot. Just saving it for later. Brandon, what are we going to do with you, mister? You think Sapphira likes her... Likes her food full of pine straw. All right, so let's have a, a little bit of a slingshot competition. Just to start off for the audience here, um, this year we're picking up slingshots for the family and uh, seeing if we can kind of get good at it. Um, insp we're inspired by uh, Fowlery, Fowler's Makery and Mischief and, and the likes. But... I bought my, uh, I think whatever it's called, Axion Opus or something like that. I don't know. It was uh, it's a off simple, his website. Simple shot axiom slingshot thing. Oh, yeah. I don't know. And mine's called the simple shot bean flip. Uh -huh. but anyways, let's see what we can do. It's oh, a, yeah, it's a really cool little hobby, um, and it pairs well with outdoors. And you can get good at this, and you'd always have ammo, pretty much. Oof, that was close. All right, so the first one that hits the target, what do, we, what do they get? Mm -hmm. I know what you would want. <laughs> All right, so the first one to get the, hit the target gets a chocolate bar. Chocolate bar, okay, a chocolate bar. <laughs> I don't think we're in each other's danger zone. You'll notice Eleni's right handed and I'm left handed. Maybe we should be back to back then. Well, we are, kind of. Oh, I missed the whole thing. We're not very good yet. <laughs> I'm just getting warmed up. Gotta learn consistency so we can move our point of aim a little bit. I yes! Hit it. You get a chocolate bar. I get a chocolate bar. <laughs> that was close. The only problem is I don't really pay attention to where I was when I get close. You don't pay attention to where you're aiming or no, anything? No, no, uh, I'm trying to get trying instinctive. To where... oh! oh, she nailed it. <laughs> so our um, simple shot slingshots each came with an extra band. So we're sitting here crafting some little slingshots out of um, some sticks we found. And I know that none of these forks are probably like the perfect shape and size and whatnot, but... We're just seeing what we can make out of the extra bands we have. Oh my gosh, Alana, you are so dangerous. There's a fork. There is a fork there, but holy cow, like you cut yourself. Dude, you are gonna cut yourself so bad. Wait, did you wow. already cut yourself? No, that was Brandon. Okay. When you put him in the hammock with me, he was like <laughs> for some more techniques I need to do. Oh. So you know how to make a really good is that like a little like palm? Dagger? Is that what you're making? This needs to get ang angled in. Uh huh. Is that your new knife that you got with your Christmas money? Yeah. I like it. Let me see it. Wow. That it has awesome. a good grip too. I know it does. Did your other one get a little busted up over the years? Yeah. Show me what you can do with that. Can you go faster? Uh, how far is he over the water when he swings out like that? Oh, he's all in it. Do you know what I think it might be time to do, honey? What? The thing I shouldn't be doing. I think I might. Maybe. So in the back of the pilot here, we have one of our five paddle boards. They're um, gilly inflatable paddle boards. They pack pretty small. Mine's the biggest, but I brought it just in case we had time. I needed, I needed something to do. So I'm gonna inflate it up. We'll take it on to the lake over there. What we're curious about is we've never taken Brandon on the paddle board. So we're curious, can he do it or not?
I know she cut herself. There's my life jacket. What? Paddleboard and inflator. Life jacket in there? Yeah, my life jacket was in there. So this uh, pump turns off automatically after it reaches the uh, appropriate pressure. We're going to do a video kind of featuring our little paddleboard fleet and talking through the pros and cons of them. One of the cons is that compared to a kayak or a canoe, these don't track without a fin. We, with this brand of kayak or uh, paddleboard, we have a very small fin called a river fin, uh, which helps. But uh, that's one of the downsides of paddleboards. So I'm going to put the fin in first. That way I can kind of slide it in. I'm going through my head of all the required pieces that I need. I've got my life jacket right here. It's an inflatable one. I, uh, where do I pull it? I need to know this in case I fall in. All right. So yeah. I just pull it right here and then you rotate it around and then you put it over your head and it floats you. Really? Chest up. Yeah. Thank you, Eli. And you need a whistle in the state of South Carolina as well. And then between this life jacket, the whistle, I am legal. All right. Are you going to come with me? Can you get Brandon? Brandon, you're dead. So it's gonna be interesting to see if the, do the first one on cat will do he's it. He's gonna go and pop it. No, that's he's one he's not gonna pop it. Well, they must be hunting over there. Guns. Yeah. That's one of the downsides, of course, um, to the paddle boards, the inflatable paddle boards, is that they can be popped. Right. All right, you might want to go ahead and get in the water so you can't have the option. So? Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Brandon. Yeah, maybe. Let him near the water. You gonna get on by himself? That would be crazy. Uh oh, his little leash went in the water. All right, can you give me a little? Yeah. Off? And you're off. I don't and know now we got a paddleboarding cat. Woohoo! Right, I'll try to go on the other side of him real quick. See if he just yeets himself into the water. <laughs> so, like we mentioned at the beginning, we were curious to see if can Brandon do this or not because it's a quiet activity. So, in some ways, he could do it. Good. Yeah, he is doing pretty good. Come here. He's meowing though. But what if he like sits here and he uh, finds comfort in my lap? A water cat. See, one thing about Brandon that is really cute is when he's uncomfortable, he finds comfort in us, which is I think kind of unique for cats. Like. I've noticed a lot of cats, when they get uncomfortable, they just freak out. <laughs> but Brandon, he kind of comes and, and uh, figures out, or he comes to you for comfort, kind of. Oh. Wait, get closer, get closer. I am, I am. Push on the rock next to you. Double pet paddle boarding! Double pet paddle boarding. <laughs> Gotta go before Brandon figures out a way to get off. This is so cute. He doesn't have his sea legs yet. He's like, Safira, don't knock me off. Oh, he is coming to your lap. That's cute. Yeah. He might be able to get used to it. I mean, if he can off road, you would think he could do this. Yeah. Let's try standing up. Oh dear, honey, don't do that.
Hmm. Yeah, I'm getting one right now. Look at them. Brandon, he like does pretty good for what he what it is, but uh, the more so there's some hunters over here coming. Where? Come here, boys. Come here, boys. There's hunters. All right, Brandon, be patient so, I, so you can get off the land. <gasps> oh, come on, Brandon. <laughs> grab him, grab him, grab the leash. Oh, I can't move. <laughs> what happened? The hunter man's here. He just or ran hat. just oh, right into no. the water. Well, now that Brandon fell off, Safira and I are exploring this lake here. It's not too too long. I can already see the end of it. You can see the end back that way as well. Sapira, are you going between my legs? So far I'd say this is a good scouting trip. I'm looking forward to dinner, warming up some food on the fire, and can't wait to see how the kids are doing when I get back. All right, so I was paddling back in peace and tranquility with little Sapira and I. And I come back to this boy, laying here. He's not feeling good. We think he might have, we think he might have broken his collarbone. So we're rushing him to the hospital. He fell out of the hammock, though. So we always have to be, we always have to be careful with those hammocks, right, guys? There he goes into the emergency room. We're pretty close to our house, so we're gonna go and Literally one get minute. dinner started and wait for the news. So we'll be praying for him. And uh, hope, praying for the best outcome possible. All right, so Isaac has said that I think he's going to have to watch a lot of movies while he's at home, depending on what they do. Right? Going to have to watch a lot of movies? Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, so we wanted to end this video talking about Isaac and how he's doing. We just wanted you guys to know that he is doing well. Um, after the emergency room and that x-ray, we did go see a specialist, and he really surprised us when he told us that Isaac's bone would be able to heal itself. And it kind of reminded me of some old movies where people take a horse and buggy, and they it takes them a long time, like a week, to get to the doctor, and when they get to the doctor, they used to have to break the bone again and reset it. And that's kind of a, kind of reminds me of how fast bones can start healing. But the specialist told Isaac that he would be able to lift his head, his arm or should be able to lift his arm above his head in two weeks. And we're sitting at 11 days since the injury, since he broke his collarbone. And uh, how long was the pain really bad, Isaac? Did it last for like- One day. Only one day? It started feeling a little bit better after that. So we got him on a little bit of pain medication, but we definitely noticed within three days, he started uh, using his arm a little bit more. He was able to start putting his clothes on by himself again. And uh, do you wanna show them how you can kind of use your arm a little bit now? How you can lift it up a little bit? Yeah. So already he's starting to get some functionality back. And uh, what kind of lesson do you think we learned, Isaac? Never swing on to hammocks too quickly. Never too quickly? Well, I think that we just learned that you have to be careful when we're out on adventures, right? And hopefully you but guys... I am the one that gets hurt almost every day. Do you think that's because you're the most clumsy? No. No. Mommy hurts herself a lot too, doesn't she? Yes. You take after mommy? Yes. Okay. Well, you got to be careful for sure. Um, hopefully you guys watched the previous video I made. It goes over uh, different tips for keeping your family safe and kind of highlights some of the gear that I use to keep my family safe. But it was definitely a lesson. Um, or there was a lot of lessons to learn from it. And I am thankful that we had everything we needed to get Isaac back to safety and uh, get him to the doctor. All right, Isaac, you want to go inside now? All right, love you, buddy. Try to shut that gently, okay? 
close this video out just to finish it up. Um, I do have some new shirts, mugs, stickers up on my Patreon site. Um, they're all one design that I created, uh, which features a Honda engine. It says Heart of Adventure on it. I think it's really fitting for any Honda enthusiast that's got a, a J35 or J37 uh, based motor. I think it's a really cool design that you guys will really like. And when you sign up for certain tiers of our Patreon site, um, you'll be able to receive those after enough qualifying payments. You'll be supporting our channel and helping us make more content and hopefully uh, continue our family adventure education. Uh, the more I think about it, um, that's another thing that I want to focus on is uh, just helping show people that you can take your family out on adventures too. And I know this one was a pretty rough one. Um, sometimes you learn the most in life from the hard times. And we definitely learned a lot from this one. Uh, but we're thankful that Isaac's on the mend. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. We're trying our best to post a video every Thursday. And so far, I've been on track. So we'll catch you guys next Thursday. Over and out.